So yes, uh, Alex, you're here just for one of our patented uh, fanfic streams where I basically made a fake and with assistance from some of the others, I will read it and we will give reactions. Yay! Now, the fiction that I picked specifically for this occasion to bring to get Alex into our stream is actually a fanfic that deals with the character she might just be familiar with, and no, it is not Sunset. Ow. The fanfiction this deals with, well, the character the fanfic deals with is Zakora. <laughs> a Zakora fanfic? This is a first! And to be, well, actually, it's Zakora and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Hmm. No, but the why you gotta invite the drunk to the party? <laughs> well, let's get into the details. The fan fiction is called To Catch Up With The Sun by Dark Avenger. Huh. I'm going to post it in the chat here. There you go. Okay, I'll just copy and paste the little chat thingy, and all you guys just feel like following along. You might want to open it up in like a new yeah, tab or something. Please. Yes, now the details of this fic from the, the brief synopsis I have. The CMC tells Zakora how they earn their cutie marks, and Zakora turns to the story of world. So basically this is taking in like a, some alternate universe type thingy where the CMC finally have their cutie marks. Unless it happens in the not too distant future oh, of season 4. Is Sweetie Bells finally a music one because she can sing? I hope so. I would not yeah. know. <laughs> but yes, I'll also, shoot the world if it's not. The other's note here is, is this fiction is a submission for the Writers Group's first official group contest, crowd number two, was written over the course of a single week under influences such as alcohol, the vacation in Moscow, hours of walking, tennis, and the music of Swans and Pink Floyd. Shit! That's my vacation! Strike me up! <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're going to love this. I, I'm, I'm sure Alex would love to take Zakor for this fake, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> we want Sweetie's Keeney Mart to be robot gear. Oh, God. Why are you... Seriously, keep your friendship as witchcraft shit to yourselves. Yeah. Well, you know, at least this will be good little build-up since next week's episode of My Little Pony is Flight to the Finish, which is essentially dealing with the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Well, Whoa. that's something to look forward to. We went yeah. from Daring Do... We went from Daring Do fangirling to... Whatever the hell, what, whatever the hell the CMC do. This one or seems to be centered around Scootaloo, I believe. Scootaloo. Yes. And what's his uh. Pinterest is saying, Alex, they invited the CMC for the same reason you invite that creepy Uncle Phil you don't hang out with, especially because your mother avoids him too, but you still invite him because he's family. Wah! Uncle Phil? I'm confused. As am I. I ain't got no Uncle Phil. <laughs> she, she's adaptive. I just love it. She's so funny. And speak, speaking of which, I think also, how old did you say were? Because I, I don't think I got that. Seventeen. Yeah, she's like the youngest of us here. Is even younger than I am. Shadow. Does that make me a pedophile? <laughs> how old did you say you were, Gonzo? Twenty-four. <clears throat> About to be 24. twenty-five within the next two months. Oh, you're the same age as I am, Shadow. I don't think. Well, I, and I'm 20, so. Look at you all dwarfing me in age. <laughs> well, I don't think it matters. Our friendship remains, and it will remain. And goddammit, this is gonna be a good stream. Alright! <laughs> Let's so go! So, why don't you say we dive in? This is to catch up with the sun by the Dark Avenger. <clears throat> Let's see which parts was influenced by alcohol. Maybe the part that, like, doesn't state who's saying what line. <laughs> Let's see! You can't tell! Ugh. Hey, I'm sure. The Timberwolf, spied its praying complete... Oh, God. Timberwolf? Oh, right, oh, right off the bat, damn. So, I guess the deed from Spike at your service wasn't finished after all. <clears throat> Come on, Apple Bloom, hurry up! I'm coming, haul your horses! <laughs> This is exactly one of the reasons I wish I'm Shadow over here, because I can do a silly voice for the fucking life of me. Eh. But who's who? Well, I think we could tell Apple Bloom was there, so I'm guessing that it was either Sudaloo or Sweetie Belle who said that. You have to guess. I suppose so. Go on, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. You're allowed to be as funny as you want here. There are no restrictions. Anyways. 
The wooden skeleton of the creature lay motionless on the forest floor, its features blending in among the exposed roots of a nearby tree. It aided its concealment of using the shadows created by the thick canopy, while exposing its head to one of the few tiny patches of sunlight that managed to break through, which prevented its glowing pair of eyes from standing out in the darkness. The light was a minor distraction to the wolf's vision, and all of its other senses were more than capable of keeping track of its targets on their own. Hmm. Starting off with a heavy shit already, I'm surprised. Ugh. Timber wolves. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Move it, you two! I'm not gonna wait all day! Well, no pony told you to rush ahead, Sootaloo! Yeah, at least Speedy Bill stopped to help me out of that ditch! Ditch. Yeah, ditch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it sensed the trio of small, noisy, four-legged creatures drawing closer, and induced from the pace of their approach that their path would avoid direct contact with its position. It was a minor concern. You sure this is the right way, Scootaloo? It doesn't usually take this long to get there. I'm positive, girls. Never doubt my awesomeness. <laughs> Scootaloo, just like Rainbow Dash. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little worried at this point, just because of that. You, that. you reminded me, you sound like another character, and I just can't name. Oh my god. Mm hmm? Who did you sound like? Jesus Christ. Never mind, go on! <laughs> uh, uh, we'll let you figure it out. I'm sure it'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, you gotta start acting like Rainbow Dash now, too. Besides, I don't think we've ever come this way before. Called it! <laughs> button mash! Oh, button mash. That's what you sound like! Uh. Ah! It hurts! It hurts! Ah! <laughs> oh, hey, a bit! <laughs> I had to. Yep. <sighs> the wolf wanted to be cautious. Although the prey was small and most likely would not be much of a challenge, it had never encountered such creatures in the forest before and had no idea what to expect of them, so wait. It's probably a different pack from the ones that attack Spike in the main six. Well, I mean, okay, so Timberwolves have always seen ponies, but they've never seen fillies? Apparently! Youngins don't go in the forest of terror, ever free forest terror. Mm hmm. <laughs> Especially not when it's getting fucking overrun by Discord's own prank gone wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Mm. Self would thus be its greatest ally, giving it a chance to end the fight quickly and without any complications. Wait, you mean to tell me you've led us off normal path? Yeah, I did. So what? I figured we could try something more exciting this time. Great, Scootaloo. You killed them. Nice going. Well. That's thanks. the end! <laughs> thanks, thanks! Taking Good care everybody. to avoid the crunchy forest floor, it leaped suddenly between trees, rocks, and empty patches of ground, opening its eyes only for a split second each time to get its bearings, and otherwise keeping them firmly shut to hide their glow. It had no further use for its eyesight until the very last moment, as the scent and noise of its prey was more than enough to keep track of it. Great. We get our cloaks torn up. You're the one explaining it to my sister. Our cloaks? Or are we running into a cockatrice? Or whatever else there may be hiding in the forest? Ugh. I wouldn't want to be imagining that. Ugh. I don't know. It's like they're reading two different stories when they go between the flipping crusaders arguing with each other and a vivid, like, description of an animal. Just... Oh, it'll pick up soon enough. Then again, I haven't actually read this, so this is another blind reading. Oh, well, yeah, well thank this you is how... for, for promising something you're not sure of. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this is how things go here. We basically just blindly read the fanfics, and uh, it, our, that way our reactions will be genuine. Yeah. <clears throat> it could not understand what they were communicating between each other, but the tone and the rhythm of their calls betrayed no sign of alarm. Their movement patterns too seem to be called and care. <clears throat> Try that again. Their ah. patterns too seem to be calm and careless. No attempt was made to conceal their passage. They did not suspect any kind of threat. It would prove to be a fatal mistake. You're surprised they're gonna die? Will you two quit whining already? I know where we're going. Psst, speed it out. Sure you want to twist a chicken to lead us? <laughs> Are we really gonna? 
We're really, really beating a dead horse. What kind of asshole is Apple Bloom right now? And of course, I do the scoot scoot loo thing. Scoot scoot loo. Close enough. The timber wolf was moving its limbs inches at a time now, creeping toward the noisy trio who had suddenly halted their trek through the unlit woods. They formed a rough triangle in the center of a small clearing, and their calls began gaining intensity. All the better for the predator. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> As the added noise would aid its silent approach. Basin, you're just a silly chicken who's lost in the ever-free forest. And the brave, we're the brave crusaders who had to come looking for you. Are we really gonna beat that dead horse to death? It would seem so, Gonzo. It would seem so. God. I am not a chicken! And I'm not lost! I ain't scared either, unlike you two pansies! Ooh, ooh, shots fired! Ow. Well, yeah, sure you- Hey! The wolf falls in its advance, confused. One of the creatures bolted all, bolted all of a sudden. The other two falling after. Scootaloo, wait up! Where are you going? Don't you leave us behind again? <laughs> Scared to be left without me? Well, who is the asshole now? They all have the same voice. I know because again, I am not good at voice executing Mark Crusaders. <laughs> well, I would help, but I don't know who's who. It's all right. Moments later, the one that ran off stopped again and turned back around. The other two went on with their racket. Timberwolf huffed, deciding that it was time to act. Its prey was at its weakest now, too busy playing around to suspect anything until it was too late. It crouched low, concealed behind a bush at the edge of the clearing. Its joints tensed up like compressed springs, waiting for the moment to propel the wooden creature into its lethal advance. It took a deep breath and opened its eyes fully, fixing them on the three small beings ahead. The sound of a twig snipping. Yes, snipping. Yikes! The sound of a twig snapping. It's like we're. It's like one end we're watching an MLP episode, and another second we're watching an Ad Geo special. Thank you. <laughs> yes, the wolf froze in mid lunge as quickly as it could without making any noise. It turned its head towards the direction of a sound, where it noticed another four-legged creature trotting calmly along a different path a few dozen trees away. Hmm. Could it be Sakura? Hopefully. I don't know. This thing's like a bajillion hours long, and I, I haven't learned anything. <laughs> the timber wolf narrowed its eyes as it scanned the intruder. Its body was similar to the three it was hunting, though it was much larger and sported a different hide. There appeared to be a second layer of loose, dark brown fur covering it from head to tail, concealing its face from view. Hmm. Is it right in a hood? Hopefully, I don't know. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping we go through this quickly. Despite, like quickly! This is like a gajillion words! Despite the surprise of having failed to detect the creature until now, already well within the range of its senses, the hunter saw no further reason to pay attention. It was too far away to be a threat, did not seem to be aware of either predator or prey, and its path was leading it directly away from the clearing. The wolf ground its teeth together, a bit more anxious now, and turned back around. The other three stood there, still oblivious. No more distractions. It was time to act. It opened its jaw once more, bearing its sharp fangs that were aching from the anticipation of soft flesh rubbing against them. It took another deep breath. Another snap came, this time directly behind it. The Timberwolf's heart skipped a beat. Its eyes grew huge as it spun around, staring at the strange figure now standing directly behind it. Okay, okay, I hope we all know that all this is happening within the period of about, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And it's going to take... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's just, it's just... No, it's alright, it's alright. It, every every word that they're using to describe the tiniest little motions. I, if I was an editor, I'd just highlight it all in red saying, get this out. Yeah, it's, oh, not, it's, dear. it's filler. Well, it, it's gonna pick up soon. Its surprise left it stunned for entire seconds, long enough for the creature to raise one of its four legs before its face. There was something at the tip of the appendage, reflecting the few penetrating rays of sunlight with a gentle red sparkle. The wolf let out a deep growl and lowered itself into a fighting stance. Its opponent did not move. Unwilling to let it keep the initiative, the wooden creature lunged forward. The next moment, its vision was enveloped by an angry red haze. Another worldly roar passed through the forest. 
The three Phillies completely forgot about their argument, screaming like newborn foals as they quickly huddled together. <laughs> <laughs> they're finally stopped arguing. Let's go. Where? And finally, we're there. It's finally it shows who is who now. Oh, it's about. F I'll kill the world. <laughs> what was that? Speedy Bell cried out. I don't know. Apple Bloom replied, <laughs> her eyes darting back and forth. The bushes to the left of her their path shook violently. They shrieked again and jumped away as one in the as one in the opposite direction. No, Sweet Little whimpered, hugging the other two closer. No, please don't let it be. What? Sweetie Belle whispered. She was on the verge of tears. Don't let it be. What? A, a manticore? Or maybe a timber? Another loud roar came. This one preceded by a bright flash directly above them. They froze all of a sudden and raised their heads, looking up at a small gap in the canopy. Through the gap, they could see a suddenly approaching tide of dark clouds, small flashes of light winking in and out and across its surface. A soft breeze rustled the foliage around them again. The three fillies slowly let out of breath they'd been consciously holding. They looked back down at each other and giggled. Hmm. Okay, just... okay, okay, okay. This guy writes like Dickens. Like, like he's getting paid for every word that he writes down. <laughs> it's slow, admittedly, yeah. No, oh, no, but you, you know that. Dickens got, like, paid, like, 35 cents a word. That's the only reason why everything was long. This is the same thing. Oh boy, let's keep on. The bushes to their left exploded in a shower of leaves, twigs, and dirt. A large, brown, skeletal creature leapt forth into the clearing, running past the stun trio, missing them by mere inches. It skidded to a halt a few paces away and began thrashing around furiously, tossing its head left and right, then grinding it against the dirt while gripping its with its paws. It growled and whined non-stop, then suddenly threw its head back, letting out a long howl of agony. With its face now in full view, they noticed faint traces of some sort of red powder coating it. Hmm. Hmm. Red powder. Interesting. Oh, flippin' no, I'm not putting two and two together right now. I'm just thinking about how many words are in this story. Oh. After <laughs> a few more seconds of frantic struggling, it lunged back into the thick of the forest and finally disappeared from sight. Though they could still faintly hear all the noise it made as it tore through the undergrowth, howling in pain. The three fillies looked on, completely dumbfounded. Uh, Speedy Bale began. What just happened? I don't. Shh. <laughs> More noise came from behind them. The sound of the forest floor crunching, hoofsteps, being branches being softly brushed aside. Let's hope it's who we thought he think it is. Abu cried out as he thrust out her hoof. Hey, look over there! Yeah. Pointed toward the path on the other end of the clearing, and they watched, mouth agape, as a familiar figure slowly emerged from behind the trees. Is that? Sudalu joined in, her eyes widened. Girls, it's Zakora! Yay! Yay! Zakora! Zakora! Speedy Bell called out. Oh, are we glad to see you? The zebra mare approached from the direction opposite the one they. <clears throat> Try that again. Approached from the opposite up. <laughs> God! Start the whole story over. The zebra mare approached from the direction opposite the one they came along the path with her usual calm pace, wearing her quote unquote trademark brown cloak. Valiant Crusaders, so nice to see you too. But why are you here now? With <laughs> yeah. Okay, with the storm passing through. <laughs> no, I gotta admit, that's not bad. Yes, she's no, not only just... a good Sunset Shimmer, she's a good Zakora. I can't even do it seriously, because the rhymes make me giggle. <laughs> Don't feel bad, it's okay. Uh, we were just... Sweetie Belle began. Apple Bloom tried. You see, we, uh, just, uh, hiking! Yeah, the fuck were you up to? <laughs> hiking. She gave an awkward grin and nudged the other two with her hoof. That's right, hiking! Yeah, killing my crusaders, forest hikers, yay! Yay! <laughs> the zebra mare pulled the hood, covering her head back slightly, revealing her smile as she regarded the three stampering fillies. I believe this is the chorus part because of the rhyme. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Lots I'm... of things for me to sh chuckle. Sh okay. The hiking I see is <laughs> <I can't> be... okay. <laughs> the 
The hiking, I see. That much is clear. But is that truly what brought you here? Like before, you followed the perilous trend. You cris... Your crusade has not come to an end. <laughs> All three glanced at their flanks, realizing what she was referring to. Yeah, about that. He began in unison. Hmm. <sighs> what did they get Cutie Marks to like? I'll shoot him. Oh, we wanted to tell you personally, so that's why we came to visit, Speedy Bell said first as they all settled down inside. Yeah, we would have gotten here sooner if only Scootaloo hadn't led us on the wrong path. Apple Bloom added. She plopped down next to the white filly, glaring at her other friend. Hey! You said we should do something fun for the occasion. I figured another adventure in the Everfree would do it. And... No, no, that's a death wish. Yes. Yes. Fuck. Well, this guy was drunk. George <laughs> Philly. <laughs> Alex has the right idea. <laughs> More. <laughs> and septic art cannons in the chat. Core is my Ziga. <laughs> Ziga? <laughs> Have you gone mad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, give me the strength <laughs> to not beat this motherfucker down. <laughs> For God's <laughs> Besides, it wasn't the wrong path, either. If you would have left us straight here, if only some ponies wouldn't have stopped to whine along the way. The young unicorn rolled her eyes. Anyway, since you were always nice to us and helped us out before, we figured you deserved to be one of the first to know. And who better to send the Cutie Mario Crusaders themselves? Eh. Why can't they just send them a letter? Sakura. Wait, what? 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 I don't even know Sakura. Uh, yeah. Apple Bloom meant Zakora. Uh, Kitty Pox. And, and, and Bridal Gossip. Yeah. But, but listen here. Listen here. Flip <laughs> That was mostly Apple Bloom. Personally. Apple Bloom might and have told. Secondly, the... This has to be like a large period of time between then and now and just. If they well, Apple Bloom ended up hearing, ended up talking with Sakura, and also uh, interacted with her. She might have also oh, yeah, passed we, word we, to no, Sweetie Belle no, and Scootaloo. You deserve to be the first to know. <laughs> I just, uh, well, well, and not only that, not only that, why are they, why are they telling her in person? Could they just write her a letter? Yeah, mm. just like give the fucking Ponyville, so we don't have to go through treacherous junk. <laughs> oh yeah, good point there. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go. <laughs> yes. Zakora nodded silently while she handed them each a piece of cloth that she had warmed up near her fireplace, helping them dry up a bit. On the way to the cabin, the storm finally caught up with them, forcing them into a swift gallop to get out of the rain. When the first drops began to fall, the striped mare quickly took off her cloak and used it to cover the three fillets as they hurried toward her home. Well, isn't that courteous? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just noticing that Zakora like doesn't have another line for I don't know how long. Rhyming is hard. <laughs> don't feel bad, Alex. <laughs> well, I don't feel bad. I feel bad for this guy trying to write rhymes whilst drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so good, Apple Bloom said while hugging the warm cloth tightly. Thank you, Zakora. Oh, you're she raised an eyebrow, noticing the zebra's soaked mane and hide. Aren't you gonna get one for yourself? The zebra merely smiled. She gently brushed her four hooves through her mane, then swept them all over her face, followed by the rest of her body. They watched in amazement as all moisture seemed to disappear from every portion of her coat right after her hooves passed over it. It was almost as if the water was but a piece of clothing, and she simply took it off. Hmm. <laughs> That's gotta be oh. something. Magics? Guys, yeah, you guys are paying more attention to me. Sure. <laughs> Quite an enchantress, I gotta say. Do I have to? Yeah, you know, I say we have Alex do it because I. <clears throat> She's an evil enchantress. She does evil dances, and if you look deep in her eyes, she'll put you in trances. And what will she do? She'll mix up an evil brew and she'll gobble you up in a big tasty stew. So watch out! Unnecessary. There's your Pinkie Pie for the evening, and no, she's not in this fic. At least I don't think so. God, let's hope not. Let's Anyways. go. Uh, z z z z z. Wow, that's amazing, Scootle Doom Muse. How'd you do that? 
<clears throat> I pressed the space bar. I lost the line. <laughs> if time allows. <laughs> Let's give her a moment. <laughs> no rush. Oh, dude, no, 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 not set, no set tech, no! You Are you might... sure it's your time allows? Yeah, oh, no, I found it again. How we're good, we're good, Remind. we're good. Never mind, never mind. Yay! Okay. If time allows, there are many skills that one can find. Now tell, now, no, now let me hear about those marks on your beehive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That got a little kinky. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, me first! Sweetie Belle chirped. Why should you go first? I go first! Scootaloo sounded at her. No way! I get to be first! Why are they fighting on who gets to see their asses first? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know any better, I'm afraid. They don't know any better. <laughs> they clearly haven't learned much of their getting their cutie marks already. <laughs> their hooves were already raised in front of their faces, ready to duke it out once more. When they noticed the Cora's disapproving glare, however, they decided to back down. Seconds ticked by in an awkward silence until Sweetie Belle realized that the zebra was still looking at her and concluded that she must be expecting her to speak first. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so we hear Sweetie Belle's cutie mark chronicle first. See what I did there? Oh, no! Chronicle! <laughs> It'll be quick and painless, don't worry. Well, what happened was... We just ended a meeting at the clubhouse after another day of crusading, and I was walking back home. As I walked by the house, this house next to Sugar Cube Corner, I heard some really nice music coming out from one of the windows. I didn't recognize it, but I liked it very much, and that gorgeous melody got stuck in my head for the rest of the day. It was frustrating, since I had no idea how I was ever going to find out what it was, yet I really wanted to hear it again. Yeah, she wanted to write lyrics to it. She sang. <laughs> She paused for a moment to glare at Scootaloo, who mocked her storytelling with an overplayed yawn. Really? Scootaloo. I'm a shooter. Come uh, on, show some interest. What? No, I... What? I... No, 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 not you, Alex. I was talking to Scootaloo. <laughs> okay, next. Anyway, I decided to ask Rarity, since she told me so many times she had good taste in music, well, she says she has good taste in everything, really. Still, I was hoping she could identify it for me anyway. So I went over to her and sang to her the melody that was in my head. Next thing I know is Rarity shaking me between her hooves, begging me to sing something for her. So I do, and she starts squealing like I just turned into a giant diamond or something. She even drags me over to her old piano, hands me some sheet music, and starts playing the tune of some song while telling me to sing. She has talent? What, R Rarity or Sweetie Belle? Rare, uh, Sweetie Belle. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were, well, we've already established Sweetie Belle could sing thanks to uh, a few uh, instances. Show the showstoppers. I nearly forgot the name. Uh, well, yeah, and uh, the sleepover at Fluttershy's. Uh, let's let's in as long as we just stay as far away from the performance in Sleepless in Ponyville, I think we'll she she'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to tell me twice! Yeah! Okay, let's go. I've never seen her that excited before. That, and I never even knew she could play the piano. Anyway, she tells me my voice is wonderful and that I might even be truly talented. I start thinking about it and... She trailed off for a moment. I don't know. Somehow I could feel that something really big happened. Next moment I take a look at my flank almost as if I already knew what I would see there and... There was. With and... That, let's see what it is. Flank. Grinning proudly. Indeed, the area in question on her rear half was no longer bare. A cutie mark now adorned it, depicting a small bird with its beak open, perched atop a bar containing seven musical notes. Its lines are black, while the bird and the notes themselves matched the colors of her mane and tail. Zakora nodded approvingly, and even Apple Bloom gave her friend an encouraging pat on the back. Bird. Well, she's a songbird. A bird on her butt. Bird! Well... In a sense, I believe that Sweetie Belle's talent is pretty much singing, you know, like a songbird. I agree. Oh, hey, if bird. that's the case, then why didn't it show up in Showstoppers or anywhere else that she's saying? Because uh, the writers say it's too early. Uh, that and, well, well. <clears throat> some people have their own ideas. 
and uh, like the uh, blood, like uh, bloody sweetie bell, uh, something to deal with not only singing talent but also blood magic. Mm. I don't know what's wrong uh. with them. I don't know why they're so flippant stupid that they think. I don't worry. I don't worry. At the same time. I don't know, but let's go. Yes. Yeah. Scootaloo said, "Meh." Your Nami Pammy story is nothing compared to how awesome it was when I got my cutie mark. Oh, boy. Let's hear it. Yeah. So there I was. The figure just went on without skipping a beat. Standing on the edge of the platform, looking over the course as I prepared to perform the most dangerous stunt of my entire life. A journey at breakneck speeds through twists and turns so perilous that no ordinary pony could ever hope to survive it. The stress on my nerves was calm by only one thought. My stunt was to be overseen by the greatest, most amazing flyer in all of Equestria, Rainbow Dash. This was my big chance to prove to her how good I am. Ugh. Well, okay. why do I have a feel? Okay, something tells me bullshit. <laughs> Yo, right there, Alex. What'd you say there? I, I just, I, I need to curl up in a little ball. <laughs> I don't like Scootaloo. I don't like... It, it's just... It's not because this is ridiculous. It's because it's so close to something that you'd actually say in the show that I want to kill myself. Don't worry. <laughs> this will all be over soon. Just... I don't think so. Judging by my scroll bar... <laughs> hey! Speedy Hill interrupted. That's not how you told the story to us. You just said that after the meeting you went down to the skating rink they set up for a competition and tried out a couple new moves. And Apple Blue, and Rainbow Dash wasn't overseeing your stunt. Apple Blue Madden rolling her eyes. You just want to know how exactly he managed to crash into her since she was sleeping on a tree dozens of yards away. Whoa. So, what? is she a crash test dummy? I don't know, she's details, so stupid. Details, details. The point is that the two of us had set up a really tight course of obstacles that are risky to avoid at high speed, and she told me to give it a go. So I hit it on my trusted scooter, using my wings to propel myself as fast as I could, plus to help me get through her jumps and make all those sharp turns. It was really tense, and several times I thought I would get hurt badly, or even worse, like, disappointing the greatest flyer this world has ever known. Ugh. Uh, are we forgetting about, what was this, Spitfire? Yeah. 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 She's good. She's good, Your priorities, much? But then, before I even realized it, I was through. I had done it. She looked really impressed, surprised even, and asked me to do it again, and again, and again. Every time I managed to do a clean run, then she tried flying through it herself. Somehow, despite her awesomeness, she couldn't avoid hitting something along the way each time. After about a dozen more tries, she simply gave up and congratulated me for beating her. Okay. Whoa. Okay. We're done. We're done. Good day. Uh, Goodbye. Oh dear. I think I she can't handle any more. Oh, Bye. thank God this story is nearly this Scootaloo story is nearly done. I couldn't have been more amazed. <laughs> Me Oh dear. She's literally going away. Uh shit. Alex, no, wait. We love you. Alex, come back! We're almost done! Just a little while! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! We're almost done! We're almost done! Let me put a, um, the, what's the rest of the story into a word counter and see what almost done means. Uh, I couldn't have been more amazed. <sighs> me being able to match? No, surpass Rainbow Dash? The only thing that blew my mind even more was when she suggested I practice with her from then on. She said I might have talent, and that I should work on it. Then maybe what she- What if they might? Then she would, maybe she would even let me have that place she reserved for me among the Wonderbolts. Huh? What? She's too young for the Wonderbolts! What? She never said that! Apple Bloom exclaimed. She's not even in the Wonderbolts yet! Sweet Thank puppet. you! <laughs> Quit ruining my story, you two! Oh, shut up, Squidaloo. Quit lying. Anyway, it felt really good coming from her. All of my life, I have been looking up to her, wishing that I could one day hear her praise me. And with these stupid wings on my back not getting me off the ground anytime soon, it didn't look like I was ever going to. Then I realized what I was able to do when I combined them with my scooter. The advantage that gave me over all others when performing such like these, that's when it hit me. And that was when these babies showed up. They're a cutie mark. And? 
Her own mark featured a pair of wheels, not unlike those of a scooter, engulfed by raging yellow flames while leaving a pair of burning tracks in their wake. Yeah, I can kind of predict that one. Eh, yeah. Alright, what's next? Avalbloom. Enough. And yeah, she's my favorite cutie mark crusader. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you hate Apple Bloom too. I don't hate Apple Bloom. I just, I don't know. She's just the one who I can't tell what her talent is because she just is just kind of the logic of the group that no one listens to. Uh, well, uh, although she did end up getting herself into trouble, just basically you, you, making that potion that gave her the cutie pox. Yeah. Oh yeah, so she's the stupid one. Okay. Well, so let's just not exactly stupid. She's just. She's normal. She's got her ups. She's got her downs, and that's about it. And uh, I just hope that you know that uh, in this story, there, uh, what's left is about uh, ten thousand five hundred and twenty-eight words. So uh, we're going through. Don't worry. We'll just sit else. tight, and because we got like plenty of time. I normally cut oh. off at like uh, midnight. I oh, know. It's just. It's all good. It's just. I, I might not be alive by the end of it. Let's just keep going. I'm I'm enjoying this. Yay! Okay, this let's go on with fun. Apple Bloom. Anyways, thank you, Silalu, for sharing your tale of awesomeness with us lowly mortals. <laughs> Was getting out of the egg in the hen house that exciting too? Yeesh. God. God. <laughs> this dead horse is turning into dust now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let us see what her story is. Hmm? Well, I went straight home like the others, the Earth Philly began, ignoring her friend's complaints. I hope now they will help out the farm at least, what with no cutie mark of the day either. When my sister Applejack was busy pulling the car back into the barn, she asked me to put her tools back in the shed. As I carried them back, I noticed how banged up the old shed was and figured she could use a bit of fixing up. So I put the tools down and got to work. Before I even knew it, the shade was done and looking better than ever. I didn't feel like stopping though, so I moved on to the barn, fixed all the holes in the roof, gave it a new paint job, fixed the wheels on the car, even managed to polish that old plow that Big Mac had to struggle with. The sun then even hit the horizon by the time I was done. I never felt so proud before. It felt great. What is wrong with her? Uh, she basically discovered carpeting. Pretty much. She's a mad woman. She. Okay. I just I'd like to see how she did all that animated because I'm pretty sure the planks of wood would be about five times her size. <laughs> Sis came out to tell me to come to dinner. I almost broke down laughing when I saw the look on her face. She asked me how long it took to do all that. When I told her, she couldn't believe me at first. So I took her to the windmill next to the barn where I bet her I could fix it up in five minutes. Uh I uh, what happens? Two minutes later, we had running water coming from that thing again. What? Two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, there, she's a good carpenter. She's not, like, immaculate. Applejack was so happy. Very. Oh. Applejack was so very happy for me. She said I was gifted. But then, and then she had never seen some pony work so well and so fast. By the time she pulled me down from her hug, I could tell that something had changed. I had found out what, truly good, what I was truly good at. Oh my god. <laughs> and the cutie mark is! I thought I was going to say, when she put me down from her hug, I could feel that she broke something. I thought... <laughs> 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 she, 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 she turned her own flank toward the zebra, beaming proudly. The mark on it featured a small flower, representing that of an apple tree in bloom, a golden wrench laid over it diagonally. Well, that's something. <laughs> and I believe that's you, Alex. Oh wait! Oh no! Uh, uh, me, uh, ah, uh, me, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Wait. Okay. Okay. I'll just do it. Um. Well, now, it looks like you ponies have completed your quest. The striped mare declared with a smile. She then paused, noticing a gloom came over her guests all of a sudden. Why is then? That your mood is not the best. Hmm. I, I'm sorry. E ah e ah. Stop it! What the hell is going on? Well, I don't know. I 
just we I have no idea what's going on here. I am that just explains suddenly turning, everything. I am suddenly channeling my inner William Chetner for no apparent reason. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh. <laughs> okay, moving, moving on. <laughs> Can we move on? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I just... Steve L. blurted out. We... Sudaloo muttered. I guess we kind of home we get our marks together, Albaloom said. <sighs> well, with all the effort we put into it for so long... You're stupid. <laughs> Sakura's eyebrows... <laughs> Raised slightly, but she did not say a word. Yeah. What happens to our group now? I mean, we're still all friends and all, but how can we be the Cutie Mark Crusaders when there's no more crusading to do? Do volunteering this service. <laughs> she glanced at her friends with a pain expression in this. And even this! The earth really pointed at her flank. I was really happy to get it and all, but... I mean, my sis never encouraged me to do anything like what I did before. She always said these things are too dangerous, that I should let the big ponies handle it. What if I could discover my talent way back then? Now that you mentioned it, I remember having done some singing in front of Sweetie <laughs> Rarity before, but now, only now did she suddenly decide that I have talent. Sweetie Belle joined in. She pouted. Was she even paying attention before that? Was any pony? Yeah, we're gonna blame the world. Um. I'm gonna blame the world for our problems, which aren't really problems, and I don't know why they're complaining. <laughs> okay. Apple Bloom is little. She really shouldn't be handling something that big. Sweetie Belle, well, Rarity didn't like Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle was more of a nuisance than a blessing. Right? So Remember how she cooks? End, maybe she had flashbacks about when they went on the camping trip, and her <laughs> lovely. Oh my god. Filigree. <laughs> Ooh. Not only that, Rarity was thinking Sweetie Belle was more of a burden. Mm. Next. Oh, then. <clears throat> yeah. I Sudaloo muttered. I guess Rainbow Dash never encouraged me to do anything daring before either. That's a lie. She never once took me under her wing, even though I look up to her and praise her all the time. That's a lie. <laughs> she gave a sad smile and glanced behind her back. Her wings fluttered slightly. I guess since I wasn't able to fly, and she just decided there was no reason to even bother. That's a lie. <sighs> As for me, I never saw any reason to do anything special with my scooter since there was no pony around for me to try to impress. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if we can I'm see... Sorry, okay, let me see if I can try. Um, okay. Rainbow Dash never hanged out with her because it's always because it's always about Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash, and not of anybody else. Remember, Rainbow Dash is very egotistical. It's always about her, her, her. Not much of an anybody else. Yeah. Uh, have we all forgotten? Wait a minute. When did the, when when was this written? Uh, hang on. I have it bookmarked here. Let me check it out. It was written or uploaded to FIMFiction.net October six, two thousand thirteen. A few months ago. Yeah. Or a Wait, month. people are there filled with lies. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we all just forget the part that's slipping? So, you're looking for some bone you take, on, take you under their wing, huh? Yeah, I'm up to doing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, nice moves, kid, just slipping. Yeah, I think we pretty much... Yeah, she freaking forgot about that shit. No, no, no. That's something you don't forget. Especially when it's just flipping specific. Okay, she's... A, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> all in all... Scootaloo. Your special talent is also lying. Quit it. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Okay, let's go. Yes. Zakora listened to them pout their hearts out one by one, staring at the somber, somber trio with a surprised look on her face. Finally, after they all went silent and retreated to just sighs, as well as the occasional cough, sneeze, or sniffle, she decided to speak up. My oh my, the youth in your heads is still very strong. Can this honestly, honestly, can this <laughs> honestly be what makes you feel so wrong, you stupid fucks? <laughs> <laughs> Sassy Sakura! Uh -uh. I'm mad at these girls. 
the god is very angry. <laughs> Man, these stupid fillies will make me explode! I don't know what else to make rap with this. I forgot. I, 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 I didn't find a way to turn my hoop into a fist. <laughs> 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 Stop it! Stop. Stop it! Or Lyra will get after you for finding out the true secrets about hands. Hands! <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just keep going, cause we're like, it looks like we're. I can't even tell if we're like a third of the way or not, cause I got the page up at least. We're well, not a third. We're about right. one fifth. Their eyes widened in surprise as they looked up at the striped mare in front of them. She shook her head slowly, a smirk on her face, and leaned clo <laughs> closer to the fillies. Okay, I'm now feeling uncomfortable right Okay. <clears throat> a powerful bomb is formed within the group you've made. But did you really expect such an end to your crusade? <laughs> okay. Um, excuse me. Three sharing one mark. You wish that upon your re rear? Oh, <laughs> should it not be unique and find its own time to appear? Hmm. I, I want to find something else bad to rhyme with that, but I can't. Nah, <laughs> let's just go. So I'll kill him. Oh no! She, she continues well, on. Oh! Others are not to blame. They cannot force it all. <laughs> oh. Help me! <laughs> okay, out. <laughs> They cannot force it out for you. Talents can only come from within. It is the source that must be true. Yeah. <laughs> she then pointed to their caves drawing on a line near the fire. Do you remember all of those many things you've tried? The trio nodded. Scootily I'm not even... gonna rhyme! <laughs> even giggling a little, they had to admit that in retrospect, some of their activities may have been a little over the top. If you open your eyes now, what do you expect to find? Uh. What? <laughs> so, uh, so I was having a rather an interesting envisionment there. I was waiting for you to continue! The Phillies pondered silently for a few moments, recollecting all their past endeavors. In the end, they simply shrugged. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Sakura. Sweetie Belle muttered. We did get a little carried away. We wanted our mark so bad, we never realized how far we went to get him. Apple Bloom joined hey. in. We ignored everything every pony else said. You did some pretty mean stuff. Uh-huh. Like running the flim like the biggest smear campaign in a newspaper ever. As the Gabby Gums from Pontyville Confidential. Yeah. <clears throat> How about that instance in one bad scene? Hmm? Oof. Grand Theft Auto. Ah! Grand Theft Auto. Fucking Ponyville edition. <laughs> Grand Theft Pony, yeah. <laughs> it was right there in front of us the whole time, Scootaloo admitted as well. If only we could have slowed down a little, maybe we wouldn't have wasted all this time and blamed every pony else for it. But what about us? What are we supposed to do now? Are they having a flippin' midlife crisis? Oh my god. This is what it sounds like. Funny, I've never seen the main six have that kind of crisis. They're not middle-aged. None of these ponies are. <laughs> Zakora sat down before them, placed her hooves under their chins, and gently lifted their muzzles. What? What? Okay. What? I don't know. I don't even know what that kind of what they even looks like. Place their her hooves under their, their chins. Oh, I thought she placed their hooves under their chins and forced them. To... Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Let's not go there. Let's try some. Yeah, anyways, 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 anyways. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. <clears throat> A cutie mark is merely part of the whole. A pony who is much more. Uh, she began. As she began. <laughs> uh, keep going. As it is merely part of your hide. He just... Just no longer blank as before. What? It's so chat. Uh, that's, well, it's kind of hard to figure out what the hell she could say that rhymes, so... Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, I guess the next part's mine, too. Yes. Why give in now, knowing all those things you can do? You should... You should exploit this chance that's been given to you. You are still young, full of life, in your soul plenty of spark. But there, there are many other, <laughs> there are many others who have yet to find their mark. 
Hmm. Stop being so fucking ungrateful. <laughs> I'm about to think of that too. Oh. Our <clears throat> faces will be full of my new fists. Your <laughs> faces lit up almost immediately. Hey, wait a minute. She's right. We could be the group that helps other fools get their cutie marks. Oh, no. Oh. Bad idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Think about it. Even Bab Seen hasn't got hers yet. I don't know so many new members that she could have added to the Crusaders since then. Hmm. Thank you, Sakura. You're amazing. Cutie Mark Crusaders. Uh, oh, Talent Seekers. Yay! Yeah, talent Seekers. Wow. What's next? Are there going to be Talent Agency? That's such a better name. <laughs> Cutie Mark Talent Seekers. <laughs> Woohoo! Talent Seekers. With that, the three fillies jumped up, grabbed their respective crusading capes, and bolted for the door. A sudden flash through the windows and the roaring thunder that followed it up, however, stopped them dead in their tracks. Without skipping a beat, they turned around and trotted straight back to the zebra. Uh, Zakora? <laughs> Mind if we stick around just a teensy weens a bit longer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Minimus goes. You oh, yes. three are yes, being Sakura ungrateful Mines. twice. <laughs> now listen to this. <laughs> Minerus is saying, You three are being ungrateful twice. How about I make sure you end up with a bright red ass? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was supposed to say ass. Ass. <laughs> Get your stinking ass out of me, hut. <laughs> I don't even get a yellow mite. I bash a full grenade and I swear to the moon. Keeping up my nose to resist giving a beating is simply absurd. <laughs> Everybody, it's right. It's a core rhyming at the Apollo. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The striped mare did not reply. Merely smiled and walked over to her fireplace in the center of the chamber, where she inserted a few more logs to feed the quietly dancing flames. The three fillies sat down in the semicircle near the fire, taking in its warmth while they listened to the rain pattering on the windows, occasionally interrupted by the moans of a stronger gust of wind or the numbers of thunder in the distance. As they sat there in silence, their nerves finally managed to calm down enough to let them take in the surroundings. While all three of them had spent time in Zakora's home before, they always found themselves... <clears throat> Bless me. Excuse you. Yeah, sorry, that just slipped out of me. Oh, it's all good. Makes me better. <laughs> they always found themselves amazed by all the exotic creatures it contained. <laughs> Dozens of masks, tools, and trinkets from faraway lands adorning the walls, pots, herbs, and spices all around, and certain things they did not even have names for. Even the air seemed to have an aroma to it that felt foreign somehow, though definitely not unpleasant. Every time they entered this place was almost like having an adventure in an entirely different world, full of new things to experience. Well, we all know what Sakura has in the Whoa. I have no idea. What, there's all kinds of pot. <laughs> <laughs> well, straight towards marijuana. <laughs> we had to do it at one point, and it was better than Alex did it anyways. Uh, anyways. Are we going to get uh, a story out of Zakora? Uh, Zakora? Speedy Bell spoke up. When she did, her friends finally managed to tear their gaze away from all the wonders of the chamber. I've always wondered, what's that mark on your flank? Is that anything like a cutie mark? Does it have some kind of special meaning? No, it's See a henna tattoo. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you say? It's a henna tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. The spear is perked up. She put down the bowl she was holding in her hooves and turned around, staring straight at the unicorn filly. I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, I... She began to shrink back. No need to worry, dear Sweetie Belle. She replied in a reassuring tone. <laughs> but it is indeed a long story to tell. <laughs> they looked at each other, eyes growing wide. A story? Well, cool! Well, looks like we're going to be in for a while. She then um, paused and crossed oh. her hooves, frowning. Unless it's another Nammy Pammy story with a lesson in the end. Scootaloo! Shout out, Scootaloo! You lie so much. <laughs> Zakora really one <clears throat> tiny open-handed hook coming your way. <laughs> You're getting seven across the ass. 
Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's not, let's not. Sikora okay, let's go. merely chuckled as she walked over to the other end of the chamber. Moments later, she returned with a small, excuse me, large black pot. When the filly, which the fillies recognized as one she used to brew all kinds of special mixtures, potions, and remedies. Or on occasion, just a bit of spicy soup for dinner. Or ponies. <laughs> for ponies! <laughs> I need a filly stew for my special brew. Oh god, now for more r rhyming. A fresh dose of pot is something of a treat. But when I break your jaws, not even weed will taste so sweet. Whoa. Oh, she sounds like a little witch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just go. Okay, you're up, Alex. I am not ready because I suck at reading. Don't feel bad. No problem at all, little pony guests of mine. This story, in fact, two words I will not confine. Some work is needed. What? Okay. Some work is needed, though while I prepare, a few minor details I have time to share. Like ponies, marks on your hides have been... We have worn! <laughs> Only we have them <laughs> since we are born. It's what? better than a henna tattoo. Yes, apparently so. What? Indeed! What? I have a out. You mean, you get them right from the start? When you're when born? You're born? Duh! Are you deaf or something? Scoodle will apply. Shh! Speedy Bell hiss. The striped mare did not go on. Instead, she added a few more logs to the fire, then placed the large pot on top of it. She brought over some water, as well as a couple of bags and pots from the shelves surrounding them. The fillies watched silently as she poured the water into the pot, waited for it to heat up a little, then one by one, she began adding the contents of all the aforementioned containers to the mixture. From time to time, she would stop to swirl the contents around, examine the progress of her brew, then add the next dose of powder or liquid. Couldn't they just say she started a brew and was stirring it? If only. After a few minutes, the, a grayish cloud of vapor began to seep out of the top of the pot. Zakora seemed satisfied with the results and began to return all the remaining ingredients to their respective places. She trotted back to the pot with one final additive, which the trio recognized almost immediately. Hey, isn't that the strange powder she used on Sweetie on Nightmare Night? Sweetie Bill asked. <laughs> wow! Is she gonna show us some really kinda cool illusion again? Scootaloo joined in. I bet it's gonna be a really big adventure full of all sorts of dangers and the zebra waited immediately or excuse me, patiently for them to finish. When they realized that they were interrupting their host, the tree will immediately pipe down. Wow, the, the smart, smart thing they did. Again, and slowly poured some of the sparkling green powder into the steadily bubbling mixture. In an instant, a column of green vapor shot up from the pot and slowly began filling up the chamber with a thick fog of the same color. The crusaders twisted their heads left and right, unsure of what exactly was going on and why they had no trouble breathing when the thick fog had enveloped them as well. Their ears perked up when they heard the zebra softly muttering some sort of incantation in a foreign tongue. Moments later, she stopped, and the fog began swirling around the room violently. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They made it clear in, in flipping, what do you call it, idle gossip or whatever, idle gossip, yeah. that she didn't do any incantations or witchery. Hmm. Well, none that would affect the ponies because they ran through the poison joke. Hmm. I don't know. What what did her even rhyme even sound like? That was that little poem like Hotari Karumba. Where the hell did that come from? No idea. <laughs> Just before they would have begun to voice their concerns, the motion slowed down to a much more calm circulation. The thick green haze had now filled up the chamber entirely, leaving the center of the room as the only area as containing a lower concentration of it. This is where the three young fillies huddled together, the striped mare sitting next to them. Well, wait a minute! Is that? Avalon cried out. The other two tried to look at where she was pointing with her hoof, but it soon became unnecessary to point in any specific direction. All over the surface of the haze, patterns were beginning to form. Impossible for them to identify, but nonetheless, they were distinct shapes standing out in the ever swirling fog. Hmm. Slyly patted, they stared up at the zebra. She had her eyes closed and was muttering some sort of incantation again. Seconds later, her eyes shot open as she began to speak in a low voice. Many, many moons and suns ago, in, in a land that few ponies know, there lived a pony, a flippin' zebra, 
bowl of one. Zebra! Yeah! <laughs> she pa paused for a moment, and fused trio huddled together more tightly. You always dreamed about the sun. Why are you scared of my son? <laughs> what? I don't know. They're, they're all huddling together, and I don't like it, and I cannot rhyme. <laughs> Zipporah has used an incantation so she can now speak without rhyme. <laughs> you should all be joyful. Now you don't feel like you're in the Dr. Seuss novel every single time you come <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it! We'll never get through this if we keep cracking it off like this. Oh God! I'm not even halfway through it. Jesus. Okay, let's try to let's try to push forward. <laughs> With that, the patterns themselves began to move around, attracting the gaze of the fillies once again. Their jaws dropped and a clear, colorful image suddenly appeared in the place of the green fog, all around them. The fog itself had now retreated to its edges, acting as a sort of frame. The image depicted a dusty, dry, sun-scorched land, stretching out all the way to the horizon. They viewed it from the center of a field of gray sorrel and yellowing grass, surrounded by stout trees with thin but wide canopies, as well as all sorts of creatures that they did not recognize either, roaming in the distance or lying motionless in one of the few spots or shade they could find. Anything that was directly in the light would not stay put. Their view appeared to be focused in the direction that Sakura was facing, so the trio quietly shuffled around to align themselves accordingly. Straight ahead of them stood a hoofful of mud huts. Their reddish walls and roofs made of hay tinted shovel sage lighter by the moon blaze. Between their knees, hovels trotted several four legged creatures from time to time, every one sporting a very familiar black and white striped hide. Wow. Pony Africa. <laughs> wow! All three ponies cooed in unison. All these ponies are black! <laughs> Easy! Let's not get racial! <laughs> all of a sudden. I can do it, I have permission. Oh, yes, you do. All of a sudden, the image became distorted, the shapes inside becoming blurry and shifting around. Moments later, they settled down again, and their point of view was now much closer to the village. In the center of the image now stood one of the huts near the outskirts of the settlement, a pair of striped figures standing in its shade. A zebra foal, facing an older one that was assured they assured was her father. They appeared to be speaking to each other, but there was no sound accompanying the image. Son of a bitch, if only we had that, you know, that the, uh, astral projector from Sam and Max the Devil's Playhouse, we would understand what they're saying. Eh. Yeah. Upon closer inspection, the Crusader trio noticed that they both wore all sorts of ornaments, not unlike the ones they saw in Zakora. The father, in fact, seemed to be wearing almost the exact same arrangement as their host. The foal, on the other hand, had only a pair of small earrings, a thin necklace made of straw and colorful rocks, and a single ring of the base of her tail. Both of them had marks on their flanks. The father was a diamond-shaped, maze-like arrangement of wavy lines, while the one on the filly was an image they instantly recognized, a black spiral surrounded by a dozen small triangles of the same color. Zakora! Why is this important? What? That's, that's pretty much Zakora. Mm-hmm. And that's it's Alex. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Worried by her painful sight, the father asked about her plight. The Wait, something's wrong with her? Since when? <laughs> <laughs> the image wavered slightly, and their ears perked up when they could faintly hear all the noises of a lantern surrounding them, not to mention the voices of the figure standing before them. Hey! We aren't speaking an equestrian! How is your equestrian? <laughs> Try English! I think they mentioned English. they speak English. Oh, English God. Mother English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Where's the, where's the language button on this remote? Where's the remote? <laughs> Well, I'd say this is getting pretty damn interesting. Uh, okay, let's yeah, keep going. Yeah, now we, uh, we're also not hearing who says what again. They, they took uh, a break. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. Wah, wah, wah. The father had a deep, firm voice, while the Phillies was lighter and much more high-pitched than what they expected, though still fairly low on the spectrum compared to <laughs> most ponies her age. They had no idea what was being said, so they had to rely on the zebra mare's narration. While well, the filly's short burst of speech had said in sad tone, and her father's soft monologue served as a vivid illustration. Ah, uh, okay. 
I think I, for fun, I'm going to read this line as if she's uh, mocking herself at that age. Sadness poured from within her soul. What is this purpose of this fold? There's more. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's all one! For a bit. Okay. Keep going. It's all right. <laughs> The honest meaning of their lives. A zebra's mark is all describes. Descri it all describes. I can't. Forget me. Forget me. It's okay. Uh, is it yeah. all me? I don't know. Maybe it's just yes. how. Maybe it's just the. I don't know if it's you or if it's a fanfic or what. Although. To it's me, rhyming. To it's rhyming. It's me. Yes. Uh, you did oh. have. Well, the uh, the scripts that we ended up having to d help you with didn't rhyme, but you still had a little bit of trouble. So, uh, uh, you it, give yourself a break. Not only that, uh, slow down a little bit. That way, you can be able to take time and uh, take it easy. Okay. Precisely, and I'm sure you guys are here, but now my cat has decided to come onto my lap. Don't. <laughs> oh, what? I love Nickel. Nickel. Oh god, we'll never go to we'll never get through this fanfic in one sitting. Okay, <coughs> okay, okay. She kept right. on continuing with the story. What does mine speak? Bestowed one? Bestowed, I guess. Bestowed, stowed, bestowed one. She she was certain now. Of the sun. Where does it go? What does it do after the day after its daily R is through arc. arc and yes the oh cat that's now, a c yes and, and now the cat is using the microphone yes i'm gonna have to deal with my tard it's Leave okay me. alex it's all right you're doing just fine my lady just keep going we okay, always I'm have just our not sure this, this is uh, yes i guess it is it is uh she could not stay she had to know what her father's blessing she could go. With her father's blessing she could go. Follow the blazing lantern's wrath to every land within its path. Hmm. Done. That's going to be, well, for a little bit. The pair stopped sure talking, and the father sense. leaned forward to hug his foal. She hugged him back, and they held each other for a while in a loving embrace. Oh. The father's love for one child, <laughs> for only child, would not seal her from the wild. Sensing fate, he approved her quest. With great resolve, she left him blessed. The image disappeared. The green haze is taking its place again. Wow, the core, that was amazing. Yeah, but what happened after that? Quiet, you two. Can't you see she's trying to get there? Oh my god, I thought that was. Where's my the popcorn? Line. I thought that was my line. Zero did not say a word. Moments later, the image reformed once more, now showing her younger self as she trotted slowly through the seemingly endless land. She would stop to rest in the shade under a tree from time to time, and occasionally glance behind her back, a long expression on her face. She would not turn around, however. True to her word, she was headed straight after the sun, due west. Billy was on her way, from humble roots too far away. Huh. So, wherever she is, Equestria is pretty much dead west of her. It would know, seem she's so. She's like a filly running around into wild Africa. <laughs> to that wild blue yonder. The wild, blue yonder. scary... Everything in Africa is, like, brown. Well, you <laughs> get what I mean. It's just... It's just a... It's all exp... dried up and brown. It was an expression, damn it! It was just a <laughs> fucking expression! <laughs> it's all brown, and then the sky, it, when there's a sunset, it's red and orange and brown. Okie dokie. Can we go on? The image wavered every now and then, which they soon recognized as a slight jump forward in time. It showed her in a wide variety of situations. How she traveled by day. How she set up camp for the night. How she went out to gather food and water. As well as all the other useful things that nature had to offer. How she warded off all kinds of predators using what her father and the others in her tribe had taught her. The Phillies even recognized some of the items the young zebra was now carrying, for they had seen them all just recently in her cabin. Ah, uh, foreshadow. Okay. <clears throat> and soon the known lands disappeared. Forth came the unknown that she feared. 
They watched as the striped filly strutted towards the horizon with firm resolve, her eyes fixed on the settling sun. Setting sun, excuse me. The next moment, the image disappeared once again, and the green cloud suddenly collapsed into the center of the room. For what felt like minutes, their vision was consumed by a green haze, all the sun around them fading into a muffled noise in the distance until... Hmm. Okay, can we just, like, prove my point about the whole marijuana thing? <laughs> Okay, uh, whatever she thinks in that pot was very green. Very green, yes. Well, grass is green. Does that make it pot? Sure, you go, you go out back and smoke that. <laughs> so is a leprechaun, does that make him pot? Oh, he has a pot! <laughs> he has a pot! You what? Point there. He has a pot! Faster my lucky charms! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I could be sir I could be wrong, but I think that might be. Uh, I don't know. Let's just keep going. Let's tr let. I think. Let's try. The core of the explorer. <laughs> I think that is Alex. No, oh, no, nope, nope, that's someone else. I'm looking at the paragraphs and. You want? She gasped, instinctively taking a step back from the stand. With great apprehension, she looked up at the pony standing behind it. He frowned at her, tapping its hoof impatiently on the wooden surface. She struggled to find the right words, her lips trembling as she slowly tried to breathe a response. Well, he demanded, his patience appeared to be in short supply. I think that is Alex. Trade room Oh! Damn it! Oh! <laughs> what the hell is going on? I don't know! She said trade... Rumbaya. Oh, oh my lord, Rumbaya. So that's where that Rumba got its name from. <laughs> there was no turning back again. This had to work. This was the third town where they tried to turn her away, and she couldn't let that. Wow, what's going on now? Apple God. Bloom. God damn it! What do you mean, Shut Apple Bloom. She's the one who should know. God damn it, Apple Bloom! I'm trying to watch a fucking movie! Shut up! <laughs> Get away from here! Sally replied angrily. Go fight someone else! You little brat. Ugh. Idiot brat. Having stumbled out of the shade, she had to squint her eyes to make out his features in the glare. He was a large, brown coated stallion with a thick black mane and beard. Unlike most of the others in this particular market, he appeared to speak fluent equestrian, through the, though with a thick, fancy accent. The, cont the contents of the stand before made it clear that he was one of the caravan traders. An ideal opportunity for travelers short of money, but loaded with goods. Bowing her head down, defeated again, she slowly began trudging away. Apparently, he did not welcome the sight of her kind either. Hm. I don't think that's me. That's because you've got the look all wrong. Her head oh, shot up. Fancy accent. That's you. Her head oh, shot right. up. I Is someone speaking to me? She I'm thought. still not speaking in rhyme. No, this is a crowded marketplace. A lot of people moving around and making all kinds of noise. I probably just think, uh, oh, I think I just read Alex's line. I don't know what's going on, really. Let's just... But, this, this person... Uh, uh, think about it. What exactly do you look like? The voice came again. She realized it was coming from behind her and quickly turned around. A young colt stood there, staring straight at her. He was roughly the same size as her, most likely close to her age as well. His coat was light brown, while his mane a dirty blonde. Some only one could trust, just like that? A smug grin appeared on his face. Nah, I'll tell you what, you look like one of those poor kids over there. He gestured toward the far corner of the marketplace, where over a dozen dirty and sickly looking foals were drifting about or lying in the shade. A beggar, perhaps, or maybe even a thief. Why, if I were to set up shop here, I'd probably turn you away, too. Have you gone mad? She just stared for a couple of seconds, not sure what to make of the situation, until the colt's words finally struck her. She frowned, but before she could have a chance to express her disapproval, he grabbed her by her hoof and started pulling her away from the stand. Here, let me show you how it's done. Oh. His ignorance will make my anger explode! <laughs> he dragged her through the crowd, ignoring her protests and weak attempts at resistance, and led her to the far end of the marketplace. Very let go of her hoof, winked at her playfully, and disappeared under one of the small tents set up by the wall. Moments later, a small, pony-shaped figure emerged from the same tent, shrouded from head to toe in a dark brown cloak. 
His face was almost entirely concealed by the cloth, with only a small portion of his snout sticking out under the, uh, from under the hood. The zebra's eyes widened. If she hadn't met him just recently and had not followed him to this exact spot, she probably would not have recognized him now. Hmm. Oh, uh, what on earth is this, is this child planning to do? <laughs> I have no brew! <laughs> he walked past her, almost as if she were not there, and headed straight back the way they just came. She followed after him hesitantly, keeping about a dozen paces between them the whole time. He piqued her curiosity further when she noticed that his movement had adopted an entirely different fashion. No more childish clumsiness or extravagance. Instead, there was an almost mysterious grace to every step he took, his cloaked form flowing past the other figures in the crowded square like a mere gust of wind. He led her straight back to the irate merchant they had abandoned not two minutes ago. The zebra really bit her lip, nervousness now adding to her curiosity. The shrouded colt did not seem to share her trepidation, however. He walked up to the merchant and placed a small bag under his table. The stallion, who was still busy shaking the hoof of his latest customer, turned his head lazily to the newcomer, the same condescending look on his face as before. When he realized what exactly was standing before him, however, his expression changed dramatically. Hmm. Sakura had to stifle a giggle. She had never <laughs> seen a pony so pale, go so pale, but was so... <laughs> Oh. She had never seen a pony go so pale so quickly before. The trader immediately discarded all the other customers' hoof and bowed his head before the hooded figure. Due to all the noise and the distance between them, she could not hear most of the conversation, but what little she could make out was most of the stallion rattling off apologies as fast as he could for keeping the cold waiting. Still keeping his head low, he then respectfully inquired how he could be of service. The colt pointed to his bag, then murmured what she assumed was a price. The stallion tried to call up a few objections, hoping to achieve a better bargain, but the immovable pose and the silent, eyeless gaze of the figure before him soon evaporated the rest of his courage. Muttering to himself, he produced a small bag of coins, counted the money it contained out of the open, then handed the bag over and took the one the cult had offered. After the exchange, they conversed for a couple more minutes. Strangely enough, the zebra noticed that there were plenty of other customers waiting in line, and yet not one of them dared to interrupt the two, at least not after they noticed who was keeping them waiting. Hmm... Finally, the bearded stallion bowed his head again, and the colt turned away from the booth, departing with the same peculiar elegance as the one that brought him here. She followed after him. Once they'd made it halfway across the square again, the cloak figure halted all of a sudden, turned around, and threw his hood back. See? That's how you do it! He exclaimed, grinning wildly at the sun zebra. Uh, how? Oh, silly, didn't you know? The only ones these fools have any respect for are the so called wanderers. Wanderers? Yeah! All kinds of strange folk, most of them traveling on their own, bringing all sorts of strange news from all around, and even stranger things to trade. Nobody really knows who may be under the cloak each time, and many not, not dare to question either. What matters is they'll suspect a lot worse about you than you being some petty thief or whatever. He laughed as he produced the small money bag, rattling its contents proudly before her face. As you can see, the egg, it can get you a pretty good bargain. You seem to sell the right act. She pointed the hoof at him hesitantly. <laughs> I'm sorry. You still sound like Button Mash, so you went from, like, this mysterious guy to Button Mash. <laughs> we should tell the Shady Box what I'm we just did. I am Button Mash. I am the Sash. Sash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Quit dying on us! And you stop squealing, Alex! <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Great, probably... Your father! You? Me? Nah. I kind of wish I was, since it looks pretty cool. Well, that, and this too. You know what I said toward the bag? <sighs> to... I talked to a few of them, though, and it didn't exactly sound like a very pleasant way to live. <sighs> One does not become a wanderer of their own accord unless their life finds a way to derail completely at some point. A few moments of awkward silence passed between them, before I began to speak once more in your whisper. Wanderer from lands unknown. Passerby who walks alone. Hey, these rhymes. I do rhymes. <laughs> it was in the cold celebration, so. I don't care. <laughs> what brings you to, to our, our embrace? embrace? What do you what do you <laughs> Have you found what guides your feet, driving you through cold and heat? Maybe you have lost your way. Fate has led your life astray. She looked at him curiously, noticing a hint of sadness creep into his cheerful demeanor. It quickly dissipated, however, and the cold was grinning at her again wildly. 
Well, enough about that. Want to try it yourself? The zebra's mouth dropped. She was about to voice her wish to decline the offer, but the cold was already dragging her way to his tent once more. He quickly, th he quickly threw a what? What? What happened? I'm just, I'm scared by this guy. Why? He's practically kidnapping her. Ugh. He quickly threw off his cloak and covered the baffled filly with it. To add to what he called the mysticalness of her appearance, he even gave her some mock jewelry to put around her neck and forelegs. After a few more tugs there and there, he stepped back to inspect his work. Perfect! He exclaimed, apparently pleased with the result. Okay, so you wanted to sell this bag, right? Very well. All we need to do is make sure... Hmm. Well, let's see if it works. My name is Button Mash. <laughs> <laughs> a little while later, a pair of giggling foals stuck under the pole that held over the roof of their tent and sat down facing each other, looking over their treasure proudly. After she was confident enough the zebra understood all the necessary details, the colt decided they should pay that rude merchant another visit. The hapless Sallian now seemed visibly unnerved at the second wanderer to stop by at a stand that day, but did not put up any more of a fight. <laughs> the zebra thought she must be dreaming. With her first out considerably more wealthy and her mood better than ever, she finally managed to find some relief after so many weeks of pointless struggling. As she giggled together with the colt for a moment, Zakora thought back to how she felt under the cloak just a few minutes ago. While doing her best to get into character, she felt herself slowly being overtaken by a sensation that was entirely new to her. Hmm. What's going on? Her vision half obscured, thus shielded from the merciless sun, seeing the world through a murky translucent veil and her body seemingly absorbed by the robe, she felt almost supernatural, for lack of a better word. Like a spirit from the world beyond, roaming freely among those who would rather to avert their eyes in feign ignorance than to challenge them such a being, and risk whatever horrible fate they might bring upon them. How does she learn to rhyme? <laughs> I thought that. Anyways. It frightened her at first, making her dread the possibility of messing up her act that much more. But then, something had changed. Less than an hour ago, most of the folk here would have been capable of treading all over her without even noticing that she was there. Now she began to notice the very same pony glancing at her nervously and struggling to get out of her way, her apprehension began to fade. She could almost feel her spirit swelling up, her hoofsteps slowly becoming an intangible flow, her voice going lower and her speech becoming much more sparse. Her eyes now scanned the figures around her in an almost condescending way. She even let out a tiny smug <laughs> She even let a tiny smile tug at her lips when the trader's face lost its color before it It made her feel powerful, exciting her to no end. Well, now we explain why Zakora was <laughs> giving ponies such a fright during bridal gossip. She pretty yeah. much learned how to, but she uh, she stuck with that. This explains nothing. It does. <laughs> it no, does. It explains why I wear a hood. It explains why you wear a hood and also why people would not want to mess with her initially. True. Back under the, the tent, with the robe now off of her, the sensation had disappeared, and she felt herself return to normal again. And yet somehow it didn't feel that comfortable to be normal anymore. It almost made her feel exposed somehow. Weak. Fearful. I don't like this. You're it right. Didn't... Oh, dear lord. You're right. Matter. She put the thought behind her and rejoined the cult in her laughter at the sight of their bounty. Yeah! Now you got the hang of it! He exclaimed and bumped a swoop against hers. He taught her the gesture on the way back from the second shopping trip. Oh dear lord, more rhyming. Wow, look at all the money we got! You sure had some good stuff on you. Zakora smiled. Think you good too! <laughs> nah, I'm more of a business cult, he laughed. By the way, my name is Muddy Water. For a no, moment, I thought we were talking with Braybird. Button mash! <laughs> At this, she hesitated for a few seconds. It all felt so strange. Throughout her journey so far, she was either attracting everyone's gaze around her like some exotic beast on display, or she was ignored completely. She never saw any reason to share her name with anyone before. She swallowed. Up until now, no one had ever approached her so naturally. For all she knew, he might be the first person outside her home that was worth getting to know. Taking a deep breath, she looked deeply into his eyes, taking comfort in his friendly gaze. She replied. Ooh. And somebody's going, really? Muddy Water, a blues singer? Yeah. 
And I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some water. My throat's really dry now. Meh. His great great grandson is button mash. <laughs> Why are we going with button mash? Oh God. Because his name is button mash. I gotta admit, somebody on here rhyme was pretty damn good. I just giazoed it. From your mother's womb, you did appear, and now with a gunshot, you will disappear. <laughs> Uh. Everybody's going to Oh, Have I missed anything? That was quick. Button, yes. <laughs> uh. Anyways, anyways. The vision broke up, and the cloud around them dispersed just as quickly as it had approached, retreating to the edges of the room once more. The image slowly began to perform there. Wow. Ah, Celestia! What was all that just now, Zakara? Apple Bloom asked, turning her head toward the striped mirror behind them. Oh. The illusions can work in many ways as they reveal my tale. I can make that experience direct, removing any distorting veil. Did you feel it too? Sudo will ask her friends. It was like we were in a furnace! I never imagined it could get that high anywhere. Shit. Oh. Keep, go keep <laughs> going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, I'm that's going. it's it's that's not it's not Sk Skora. Oh, were you able to sense her thoughts like I did? It was really strange. It was awesome. Do it again. Hey, look! The young unicorn pointed her hoof at the swirling green cloud, where they could now see the cold and the zebra trotting through the dry lands together. The image wavered silently and had now showed them struggling to ascend on a steep, rocky mountainside. In the distance, they could see the rest of the snow-capped rain stretching out before the pair, who seemed determined to pass through it all. Wow! You went with you on your journey? She turned toward their host. Did you two have many adventures together? Hmm. Maybe if you shut up and listen, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. The striped mirror closed her eyes, and every now and then, the illusion would shift, giving the three of them a few glimpses of the daring youngster's journey as they traveled around the world. At all times, their intended direction was clear from the position of the sun up above, toward the place where it sets due west. Going for Miss Adventures of Flapjack, west! Oh, that is a very, very far callback. I barely remember <laughs> Flapjack. Let's go. I love that. Anyways, <laughs> is that a forest? Can trees actually grow that high? Whoa! Why are those black things on the mountaintops? Are they dangerous? They don't mind the case. I want to see some action. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. More oh, apple. The ocean. My Celestia, I can't believe my eyes. The ocean. It's so beautiful. And look, they're taking a boat across. Jesus! <sighs> Yikes! It's like they're it's like they're watching a nature documentary. <laughs> We've been jinkies. Let's keep going. Look at the feathers on that bird and the giant beak. And they call us candy colored equines. <laughs> Who? Who, pray tell? I think that was either. I think that was Speedy Bell. No, no, no. I mean the people who call the ponies, you know, candy colored. Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall! <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Yes. Much. Those mountains look huge. You sure were lucky to have that cold around helping you out. Did you actually climb all those? Was it tough? There's Zakora. Ah! Uh, much we were, were through. <laughs> much we were through. Zakora declared proudly. You others would dare. Ooh, look! Now she's leaning her face close to his and. Hey! Everyone cried in disappointment as the image just suddenly became hazy again. And, and uh, did many. <laughs> And did many more things that I do not wish to share. What? Mm-hmm. Did they? Did they? I, I, uh, I think I should re-say that. <laughs> I think I should do that over. <laughs> and did many more things that I do not wish to share. Mm. <laughs> like, like, ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. Say this. Uh, take, take a look at the stuff after this sentence. Just take a look. Just, I... <laughs> just say, just say it, man. Zebra continued. 
I did the hey about that. The zebra continued. Sorry, I lost my place. The zebra continued with white stripes on her face, mixing with a slight amount of <laughs> red. Oh, Zakora's blushing. Oh, Zakora is officially blushing. When the curtains <laughs> fell, the room grew warm, and during that night, fucked what we could no more. <laughs> you have many adventures then? Skinny Bell last after they finally stopped teasing their host. Yeah, something awesome? Like fighting a dragon or teaming a rampaging hydra? Scootaloo joined in. Whatever happened to that nice cold? Apple Bloom asked, giving Zakora a worried look. I mean, none of us ever met him, even though it looks like he became your friend. I think he or left her. He was your friend? The zebra plays a reassuring hoof on her shoulder. Oh. You need not worry. I am quite certain he is well. And indeed, there are many stories I could tell. But right now, we must focus on the important part. So I will share one last memory before you depart so you can get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> the extra shit! The extra shit is gonna get me! Come on! Come on, it's funny! We're almost a, <laughs> we're almost a quarter of the way there, come on, let's go! We're almost! <gasps> come on! Oh, uh, oh, holy crap, I Am Shadow just replied to me. Oh, what's she saying? She was just, I was saying, I was just saying, wow, I'm gonna be here now, and then, hour and a half later, she replied. <laughs> Anyways, they stared at her, not exactly sure what she meant by that, until they noticed a hole forming in the greenish fog behind them. It revealed one of the, oh, I think we lost Alex. Uh-oh, really? Uh, she just said one sec. Okay, we'll wait for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Although you seriously, although you seriously skip the line about skip the line about the you know after the Sakura being a king so embarrassed today and <laughs> they were literally nudge wink wink nudge nudge say no ma <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. just ooh Sakura had a little bit of a <laughs> oh was that stallion deciding to explore Sakura's uh. <laughs> Outback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, oh Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> I cannot remember the rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I do know that this came from the Lion King, and I'm such a bastard. <laughs> We're all going on. <laughs> oh God, God, why? I'm not supposed to be sick. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, oh god. Holy oh. crap. What happened? Bonus the Anthology 3 is out, people. Holy fucking shit! Oh, wait, shit! We, if we stop now, how are we gonna finish it? I mean, it, it, seriously, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that after the stream. Uh, because, shit, I can't deal with this right now. Son of a bitch! Because as, we, as, a, as it was mentioned, we now have Source Filmmaker bits in here. Well, in this case. <sighs> I should dabble in Source Filmmaker. It looked easy when um, uh, Voca P, our uh, other our host for the uh, Mini Arcade Show Game Reviews, he ended up showing me how he did Source Filmmaker, and it looked kind of easy. Uh, I just need to remember how he does how he does the shit, what to do, what not to do, and shit like that. Hmm. <sighs> well, we'll just wait on her now. Everybody's going, what came out? Ponies Anthology 3. Yes. Uh. <laughs> hmm. Punish Budden's mom, punish Budden. Uh, <laughs> that extra one tidbit. Hmm. Button. All of a sudden. <laughs> Your grades are bad, and we're burning all your video games. 
Oh, the horror. They can count to three, unlike a certain company we all know of. Yes. And Stratos, we're not done. We're just waiting on Alex to come back. We're just waiting on Alex. Let's see. Oh, what the? And somebody just gave me something. Inks, Heidi, ho. Hey, hey, honey, ho. And guess what I just happened to see? What? Well, a few friends of mine who are artistically talented just deciding on a uh, little shipping. And um, what of? I'll just say it'll be on my blog in just a few seconds. Okay, he says with a question mark. <laughs> um, da, da, da. <laughs> I guess it was your parent or something, you know? Well, she did say that she told them they were not to bother her for the rest of the evening, so I guess she had to go step out at one point. Yay! I don't... Yay, she's back! <laughs> Hi. What's the matter with her? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, my parents are kind of moving around. <laughs> it's okay, <sighs> Alex. Anyways, where were we? They, no idea. they stared at her. Oh, yeah, it seems the rain is stopping. Wow. Unicorn Philly really muttered. Uh, you skipped the whole sure. paragraph. Oh. They stared at her, not exactly sure what she meant by that, until they noticed a hole forming in the greenish fog behind them. It revealed one of the windows on Zakora's home, and by looking outside, they could tell the storm had since died down almost entirely. The cloud cover overhead was already breaking up in several places, allowing a few rays of the sun to pass through. Wow. The unicorn fairly muttered. This story sure got us carried away. Will you show us one more thing then, Zakora? Apple Bloom pleaded. She even threw in her best cute pleading look to try and convince the zebra, which soon proved to be unnecessary, and she was already deep in concentration again, and the fog slowly began swirling around them once more. Oh boy. Yep. Stop mooching my home! <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Zakora. You have homes and cutie marks to show to your family and friends. Why did you come here first? <laughs> Come on, hurry! They galloped as fast as they could into the woods, doing their best to ignore the menacing figures created by the outlines of the trees and the undergrowth in the darkness. They padded heavily, willing their hooves to move as they struggled to put as much distance between them and the rapidly approaching sounds of a large body tearing through the forest. Ugh. What's going on? That's what I'm wondering. Waiting yeah. for you to deal with I the know, typing. I know, I know. Did you see? I was just talking with Julia. Okay. Did you see how fast that thing moved? What the hell was that? Smug. Lion scorpion. Zakora answered. Oh! Ouch. Maybe that old mayor back in town wasn't so crazy after all. This place is nasty. I think that's the manticore we're talking about. Their desperate sprint to save their skins ended up bleeding them out from under the canopy, straight to the edge of a wide, deep gorge blocking their path. The gorge seemed to run all the way through the forest, which left them attempting to circumvent it out of the question. To their right, several hundred feet away, they noticed a flimsy-looking bri rope bridge hanging over their obstacle. Without thinking, they ran straight toward it, the manticore on their tails. Yep, manticore. I was right. Yes. 
Over the bridge! She thought. Oh. Easier said than done. She thought. The wooden it's pieces... like reverb. <laughs> the wooden pieces wedged between the frayed robes somehow looked even older than the forest surrounding them. Having no other choice, they both dashed straight onto the fragile structure and did their best not to panic at the sound of the whining ropes and crackling planks beneath their hooves. The manticore let out a thunderous roar. Sakura ah. peeked behind the back, behind her back. The beast growled furiously, slamming its paws against the ground as it was forced to hold the edge of the gorge. Right. What? Roar. Oh. <laughs> she was trying to roar. He watched with a hateful gaze as his prey escaped over the bridge, which was far too narrow for it to try and cross over. That's it. Fuck. She felt a snap. <laughs> Followed by the horrifying sensation of the ground giving away beneath her hooves. Mere seconds seemed to stretch out into minutes, a heartbeat's length for free fall. Her foreleg grasping the rope beside her head, screaming, telling the other to hold on, putting one hoof before the other, panic bursts of thought. Climb! That's right, climb! Reach the other side, hurry! It cannot hold for much longer. The other reaching out with his hoof, another snap. Gotcha! he exclaimed. Zakora opened her eyes. Her heart had somehow relocated to her throat and was now trying to pound its way out of there. She looked up and saw Muddy standing at the edge of the gorge, grinning at her like he always did. The muscles of his forelegs were twitching as he struggled to keep her from falling to her doom. Yeah, and this is getting pretty tense now. Uh -huh. Near death! Come on, let's go! Uh, Sorry. Oh no, my my death can wait. <gasps> you want to climb out of there? Maybe today? Yes, between strained gasps. Zakora chuckled and used her hind legs to push her body up, thus helping her companion pull her away from the precipice. With them both safely on solid ground once again, they quickly hugged each other, laughing heartily. A I'm split sorry, I'm so heavy. <laughs> A split second later, they jumped away to either side as the manticore lunged at them. It let out another earth-shaking roar and turned toward the earth, only to its left. <laughs> what? It was stabbing its jaws and stabbing its tail at him, while he did his best to dodge every strike. Zakora grit her teeth. Of course. She thought. Sumbung! Have wings! How could I have forgotten? Has it been so long? Uh, no, there'll be time for that later. She grabbed her saddlebag and quickly lifted up one of her smaller bags out of it, using the thread with a red knot around it. With the bag firmly beneath between her teeth, she ran after their attacker from behind. Its attention was focused almost entirely on Muddy, so she managed to get close enough without being noticed, and quickly slammed her forelegs hard against the manticore's ear. Hmm. Well then, the large creature let out a howl of agony, its paws roping the side of its head. It turned around, flexing its now bloodshot eyes on the zebra, and revealed its tightly gripped teeth growling furiously. Zakora narrowed her eyes as she stood her ground. The enraged manticore charged straight at her, letting out another loud roar as it prepared to crush her head between its jaws. Having waited for this moment, she immediately jumped away at the side while throwing the bag between her teeth at the creature's face. It slammed into its snout, and its head disappeared in a cloud of bright red powder. So that's the exact same thing she used against the timber wolf in the start of this story. Huh. The manticore skidded to a halt. It started hacking and coughing as it shook its head, trying to get the powder off. Its eyes were blinking uncontrollably as they watered and began to swell up. It howled again, which sent it into another fit of coughing and sputtering, and flailed its paws and tail around in a blind frenzy, desperately trying to punish its prey for its misfortune. The roar soon turned into whines of agony as the manticore gave up. Spreading its wings, it took off as fast as it could, most likely heading for the nearest source of water. Well, looks like uh, the manticore managed to get Sakura's version of pepper spray. Yeah, the mung. <laughs> Pepper spray, how, motherfucker! How did you pull that off? She smiled. Powder ground from seeds of Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, in small doses. A delicious spice, in large enough agony to disarm a dragon, or a Zumba. Mm. <laughs> okay, seems like the manticore is on cocainum. Huh. <laughs> Let's Zumba. keep going. I'll try to remember that. He then let out another chuckle. A grumpy, nasty manticore, just as here to play, 
Some burning pepper in its nose, Zakora saves the day! Yay! Simba! <laughs> <laughs> With that, they look at each other, grin, and start laughing again. I guess that makes us even now. That's you. What? Is he replied frowning? Did you already forget the last time and. I no. was counting the bridge too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's keep going. Zakora has now learned how to rhyme. Why does she not? Why does she... <laughs> they smiled and hugged each other again, though this time they made sure there wasn't anything else waiting to pounce on them first. Whoa! Muddy cried all of a sudden, his eyes growing wide. I don't believe it! Could it be? Zakora, look at this! The striped mare turned around and followed his gaze. Right in front of them, no more than a few dozen paces of the bridge, stood the ruins of an ancient pony structure, its crumbling walls half obscured by a thick wall of fog drifting around them. What is this place? Zakora whispered. This, if I'm not mistaken, this is the ancient castle of the royal sisters. Dun dun dun! Well! Looks like we made it here before the main six did. Woo! Wait one second. Wait one second. Hmm? What? I need one moment. Okay, guess, give, let's give her another moment, guys. <laughs> oh! And now I need another moment. Bathroom! And me, water. Alright, now I'm back. Now we can see Alex. What? We just see Alex then. Oh. There she is. Oh, so now they're at the castle of the world sisters. Okay, what's gonna happen? They spend the next couple of minutes exploring the ruins, staring at each every inch of the ancient, forgotten tomb of history with awe. As they venture between the heavily overgrown remains, the light of the stars and the moon guiding their steps, Muddy did his best to explain the zebra to the zebra filly the tale of the two Alicorn sisters and the story of a so-called nightmare moon. So called. Mm -hmm. That would be disproved. That would be probably busted later on. Most likely. Edit year up, Alex. Oh. <laughs> it is a most interesting tale, but honestly, a princess that raises the sun. The car giggled. <laughs> <laughs> you. You ponies have a very strange imagination. The sun is not moved by anyone. It moves on its own. Well, it may indeed be just an old pony's tail, he muttered. Then again, you can always just go and ask her yourself about all this. Or you could see her do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's keep... Maybe. <laughs> she replied. The tour of the castle had finally taken them back to the central chamber once again. There was nothing else left to explore. Though, that is probably not what I would ask her. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, he grunted as he sat down next to one of the walls, lowering his saddle back to the floor. That reminds me, what is it with you and the sun? Why do you just be followed and head west all the time? The zebra sat down next to him and sighed. It's... Oh my God. It's nothing. No longer important. Hey, come on! Nothing does not take a pony halfway around the world. What is going on? Zakora hesitated. Should she tell him? Was there ever any reason to keep it secret anyway? She saw it again and laid on her back. Very well, Mue. I will tell you. Mue. <laughs> Mue was the nickname she had vented for him, based on how it sounded when she had tried to spell his initials. Loosely translated in her language, it meant rocky path. She so wondered sometimes if anyone could ever attribute any deeper meaning to that. He couldn't, but he liked the sound of it. Shh. Okay. A few months before I met you, I lived with my brother and father in a village deep within the land of my kind, many miles away from that city where our paths crossed. Shh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh. What if that's still you? Yes, it's oh. gonna be a while. Oh, lordy. We zebra, as you may know, are born with marks on our rear. 
They are very similar to what you ponies possess, except you seem to have... You seem to have to earn yours. Ours, on the other hoof, are not related specifically to our talents at all. They are more prophetic, I suppose. They speak of a zebra's life who wears them. <laughs> who wears them. Predicting... Wait, no. To talents? Fucking... Where am I? Uh, they speak of the zebra's life no, who I wears them. They, they speak of the zebra's life who wears them, predicting how their life may turn out and what purpose it may have. They are very difficult to understand, however, and many are... I give up on life. Good day. Deciphered. No! I know the word! <laughs> I... <laughs> Oh. I'm suffering from a slight case of retardation, okay? <laughs> oh, poor, tonight, poor Alex. Tonight and only tonight. She I'm glanced at her retardation. companion, muddy water lay on his side, looking at her, listening intently. Thanks. <laughs> I believe that I is still born... here. <laughs> I was born with a mark I could never understand. The sun, however, had always amazed me. It arrived at our land, sends its heat down onto us, then travels further on and disappears into a place far away. I had always wished to know where it went. My father said, he, wait, is this still her? Jesus. Yes. My father said he believed the sun may indeed be a part of my mark. The true answers, however, would have to be found by me. I told him what I wanted. I did not wish to stay put any longer. I had to see it. I wish... <laughs> I hate this fragment. I, had, I wish to travel after it. To see where it goes. To see what land is... Like, what the brightest thing in our world has... <laughs> this is so hard without rhyming. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, now I still have to read. Father did not refuse. He gave me his blessing, along with all of his knowledge, which he had passed on to me throughout the years. This is how my journey began. began. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, dear, I've lost my place. <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Can I? Oh. Okay, I got it. I think I got it. He gives it. a giggle. For all of a sudden, it was Muddy's turn to giggle. Sakura frowned at him. Sorry! He apologized. But come on, where the sun goes to rest? You do realize the sun doesn't rest anywhere. This keeps going around our world. Yes, I know. Uh, Keep going. going in the somber tone. I've known for a long time now. Perhaps even before we reached the ocean together. I knew. I knew I would always just be chasing after something I could never catch. And yet, I did not want to stop. I wanted to keep going, to go as far as I needed to, until I found an answer. She chuckled herself. Been losing an accent. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All I needed was a direction. This one has served me well. Enough, so far. <gasps> okay. So why be sad about it, he asked. Sound like you have to stop now. I know. But what if I'm wrong? <gasps> what if I'm chasing some silly, filly dream while my whole life is passing by me? Okay, now that's where you're wrong. Why would anything you've done so far be considered silly? Colt set up. Silly, filly? You always run catching up to the sun. You really think you believe you're the unfortunate one? Silly, filly, you're right. She blinked, unsure of how she should react. Here you are, like I've said, halfway around the world. You've seen things and know things that hardly any pony else you've ever seen. What the hell? I yes. lost my pronunciation. Like you've seen things and know things that hardly any pony else has ever seen or known in their lives. And you're not dumb either. You are wise, Sakura. Not as wise as you will be, but wise enough that you should know all this. Who cares what that mark on your flank means? Does mine mean anything? I sure would like to know. Maybe your purpose or whatever is to Hold on. Uh oh, world. wait a minute. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Hold on. What? Something's going on in the chat saying, uh, audio cut, sound dead, what the hell's going on? Let's see. 
Uh, according to mind, all is going well, and uh, the stream is going perfect. Hmm. Uh, uh, I guess it's just a glitch or something. Hang on, let's see. Can anybody hear us? Yes, can yeah. people hear us? It's fixed now. It was just some. It was just some sort of glitch, maybe on their end. Rorada. Nobody lost sound. Probably just some people having all oh, problems. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Anyways, uh, he grinned at that. Yeah. Here, I'll translate your mark that way. That big circle, the little arrows pointing outward. There's the sun. That's what you need to follow. Those circles or whatever inside, they show the sun circling around the world. That's what you need to do. Follow it around the world and see as much of it as you can for as long as you can. Maybe that mark represents your path. A path that'll take you to where you need to be. Maybe it even tells you how far you need to go. Nah. What the hell you knows what <laughs> it Does it really matter anyway? Does it matter, does the mark have to tell any pony how to live? I don't know, you answer me these prophetic questions. Yeah. Sakura had nothing to reply. Seconds tick by in silence until they finally turned to face at each other. He stared deeply into her eyes. There. Any better now? She giggled again. <laughs> oh. I think so. Good. Then let's get some sleep already. He punctuated that last sentence with a long yawn, turned over, pulling his cloak onto his back. Way. Way. Hmm? What about you? What about me? Why are you out here traveling with me? For several moments, he remained silent. Then it was his turn to sigh. <sighs> I ran away from home. Ooh. Gasp. Why? Did someone mistreat you? No, not really. To be honest, I <laughs> was more of the problem child and said, Dad always said I would never make it in this life if I don't get my act together. Skoro listened without saying a word. Guess I showed him, huh? <laughs> I think that's why I did it. I did mess with him a little. Then come back a few weeks later and tell him how I showed him. But I never did. I just kept going further and further until I ended up on that boat. The one we used to come here. Not at the moment. Dying waves beneath my hooves. I'll take you all to get my boobs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. She raised an eyebrow. The cold before giggled again. <sighs> I guess there's a lot of poems you can learn from an alcoholic sailor on a three month long trip. So that's where she keeps get so that's where the source of her rhyming came from. Him She's dealing an with an alcoholic sailor on a trip in the ocean. She's yeah. an alcoholic. Mm. Okay. Do you have one for yourself? She asked with a small grin. <laughs> I wish I did. Zakoro walked, reached out with her hoof, and patted his shoulder reassuringly. Wander who walks alone, she whispered. Someday you might get back home. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of noise was that? I have that no idea. A legitimate shock. <laughs> <laughs> she, okay. now learned, she now rhymes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He let out a faint snore. She smiled and turned her gaze up to the night sky, thinking back to that old pony's tale. The moon, she thought. The stars, especially the stars. They're all so beautiful. How could they ever assist something so evil? <laughs> her eyelids felt heavy. She let them close slowly, only panning to give them a few moments of rest. How? <laughs> That nearly, that gave me more of a deafening than a, a diabetic shock. God. I'm so sorry. A cold breeze knocked her awake. She shifted around her cloak a little, pulling it tighter over her body, and closed her eyes again. Sleeping on cold stone did not seem like such a good idea anymore. Beautiful stargazing spot aside. Ouch. <laughs> she gave a slight moan of discomfort. The breeze had just not died down. In fact... It seemed to be getting stronger now. Is there a storm approaching? She wondered. A sudden burst of air nearly threw her across the chamber. Her eyes shot wide open, and she quickly took her surroundings. The chamber was empty. There was no sign of Moe or any of their belongings. She was alone. Whoa. What? The bastard abandoned her! The goddamn bastard! 
The strength of the wind was now beyond measure. It howled throughout the ruins, streaming straight into her ears. Faintly, she could hear it rippling into the forest as well, bending and twisting its branches out of shape, then doing the same to the trunks themselves. It seemed like a miracle that she was still standing where she was. No, this is no miracle. She looked up. She dreaded to do so, knowing what she would see there, but she felt that she had no choice. Up there, on the glowing white surface of the moon, she saw the mark of the nightmare creature. As if reacting to her gaze, the shadowy stain suddenly came to life, leaping from the surface of the heavenly object straight down toward the ground, just above the lows of the clouds in the night sky. The inky black apparition halted its descent and began to reform itself. Oh, crap. What? All around her, Sikora could now hear a different sound, slowly emerging from among the endless howling of the wind, screaming. Thousands of voices from creatures of all kinds, letting out terrified screams as the nightmare came to life before their eyes. I mean, isn't it clear that Flipbin's a poor bad old nightmare moon? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and now, I Am Shadow is asking, how is the new Feisty Free doing now? The what? Remember that little thing I mentioned back when we started My Little Ponies Little Ponies? The name I gave our little group? I guess. Feisty. Feisty. Oh! How did you turn my own catchphrase into a diabetes? <laughs> Can oh. we go on? I hope so. But, yeah, that was just... Oh! <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? I have no idea what you're talking about. I figured. <sighs> well, I guess I'm going to have to get used to that. Anyways, <laughs> where were we? Somewhere Colossal. The black substance formed itself into a giant, four-legged, equine-like monster. Oh, dear. Indeed, its body was not very much unlike a pony, though it seemed to have both wings and a horn. Its ethereal mane and tail wavered in a non-existent breeze around its head, thousands of tiny motes of light drifting beside them, inside them, excuse me. Its eyes glowed, its mouth twisting into a menacing grin at the sound of every creature nearly screaming at its face. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking creepy. Keep going. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> Woo! A gigantic cloud of darkness began swirling around its head, and the abomination let out a blood-curdling laugh, its cackling punctuated by the thunder from dozens of arcs of lightning all around it. Their terror seemed to fill it with pleasure. <laughs> oh. Stop it! We're almost done! You're about to have me, like, rage quit out of sheer fright! <laughs> Spreading its war... Large, pitch-black wings, the creature jumped forth from its storm-cloud throne and flew off toward the east. The zebra watched, petrified by fear, as it disappeared over the forest canopy. A heartbeat later, the screams in that direction intensified for a moment, followed by complete silence. She listened intently, but no more voices would come from there. The nightmare rose up from above the horizon once more and chose a new direction, heading south. The process repeated, screaming in silence. Thoughts raced in her mind as she tried to comprehend what was happening. No, this cannot be. This is all wrong. But what can I do? Hide. They need to hide. Who's they? That's what I'm wondering. She ran out to the northwestern edge of the ruins, standing atop the remains of a once proud bastion, now reduced to its mere foundations and a few piles of debris. Gathering as much air in her lungs as she could, she screamed into the night. I am the Midnight Rider, Paul Revere. Be silent! Be still! The nightmare approaches. Hide! You must hide! Oh, I... On the Midnight Ride! The screams intensified through the creature had not reached them yet. She could hear its wings flapping above her. Please hide! She bellowed, tears welling up in her eyes. Quickly! Be silent! Hide! The screams began to die down. Her eyes widened and she noticed the nightmare pausing in its advance as well. It turned its head left and right, searching for its prey, and let out a furious scream when it could not find any. Ooh. Zikora breathed a sigh of relief. She got it. Then the nightmare turned its gaze straight at her. Oh. This is this is the Midnight Rider Polar. That's exactly what happened. They Her legs she... what 
I have no idea what you're talking about. She into place as she watched the abomination lunge from the sky, descending upon her at an impossible speed. There would be no running away from this. She smiled, accepting her fate as her vision was fueled entirely by the nightmare's visage. A heart later, everything turned black. You guys don't know the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Now the Ride of Paul Revere. He went and warned everybody, and then later on he got captured. Oh. I know that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, I was a little uh, iffy, so... Her eyes slowly fluttered open, then closed again. Her head was aching, and she could feel the cloak draped over her hide again. That was all she needed to know. She was alive. Tired and scared out of her mind, but she was alive. It was just a bad dream. <laughs> she looked up at the sky. The first rays of the sun were already painting the clouds in the sky a dull red. Her foreleg rubbed her eyes as she sat up and looked around. Everything was right where it should be. Nothing had happened. Nothing except... She let out a soft chuckle. The mm -hmm. next to her was empty. Something had gone missing after all. So she, so he did leave. The bastard! She did not mind. There was a note left on her saddlebag. She did not read it, merely put it away. Her cloak found its way onto her back and head once more. Her hooves carried her out of the, of the ruin, and she entered the forest again. She soon found herself on the path between the trees, which she decided to follow. Along the way, she took her time to carefully bypass a, ba a patch of bright blue flowers in the middle of the path. Poison joke where she had long since learned not to trust anything in the wild that looked so obviously harmless. Hmm. Those leaves of blue are not a joke. Yes. So the path ended in a small clearing, where she found herself standing before a large tree with a thick, subtly twisted trunk, its branches spreading out like the tendrils of a giant petrified beast. Its base was really specific... Yeah. Its space was rather spectacularly wide, almost as big as that of her father's hut back home. That last thought made her hold for a few moments. Staring at the tree, she started pondering about all that she had gone through a longer journey so far. There was no conclusion to come to, and yet this tree had made her stop to think. She picked up one of her small knives and carved a distinct hoof-sized mark into its bark. The shape was embedded into her memory, and she smiled despite herself as her hooves instinctively trailed the tip of the blade along the imaginary lines. A pair of thick curves parallel to each other, forming an inverted, horizontally stretched out S shape. She then took out some of her powders and began applying them to the carved out shape. The edges dark brown, bright green surrounding them, blue in between. Not a perfect replica by far, but she was certain everyone who would ever need to would be able to, to recognize it. That's oh. you. <coughs> Our journey together, it now must end. She whispered and placed a hoof on the mark. Thank you forever, my dearest friend. <laughs> oh, we have... And finally, Sakura's rest. As the she finally... The Crusaders slowly drifted awake. Oh, really? They fell asleep during all that? Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Do we fall asleep or something? Uh, yeah, you son of a bitch. What time is it? Oh my gosh! The sun's already setting! Girls, we need to get home! Yeah, Tsun Lu said, rubbing her eyes. She then frowned all of a sudden and turned to the zebra mare standing behind them, who was busy dousing the fire under the now empty pot. It took her a moment to realize that the room itself was no longer immersed in the greenish fog either. Uh, Zakora, can I ask you something? No. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> the striped mare turned to face her. About what the cult said. Your mark? She nodded. It's all made of circles. It's a spiral. Yeah! The earth really joined in. And a spiral is some that's on to the point and moves farther and farther away from it. Sounds like your journey, Zakora. Or, the white unicorn added, a path that starts from outside and gets closer and closer to the center. In other words, a place where she's meant to be. Hmm. Well, that's another good theory. Mm hmm. This story's just too long. One thing I don't get, though, Apple said. That cult said your mother describes how much farther you might have to go. Or rather, have had to go. And he also said it resembles the sun as it circles around and... She trailed off. Wait a minute. So that means you've gone and... She merely nodded and she gave a soft smile. Woo! <laughs> what? That's you. Oh. Yeah, g go home now. Live your happy lives. Before the po this poor zebra... <laughs> 
runs out of her rhymes. <laughs> 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 oh, dear lord. <laughs> oh, she admits it. <laughs> I've been trying to get you out of my house for the last four hours. <laughs> Okay, let's finish this up. Yes, 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 yes. The Clearly, can you hide him now? <laughs> the Phillies hesitated for a moment, having trouble taking everything in all of a sudden. Eventually, they all nodded one by one. They slowly trotted out of Zakora's cabin. I approached the path at the edge, <laughs> at the end of the clearing, then turned around and waved her goodbye one last time before disappearing into the forest. The zebra waved after them, staying put while they were still in sight, then started back for her front door. Paused for a moment, their left ear twitching, and smiled to herself. Please let nothing harm them until they get home, and then their siblings can beat them. <laughs> <laughs> the door closed behind her. Zakora tried to call me to the center of her room, moving her large stove out of the way, then sweeping up the leftover charred logs and piles of ash on the floor. She then produced a long pole made of bamboo and planted it firmly in the spot where her fireplace stood moments ago. Finally, she climbed up to the top of the pole and raised herself up with her forelegs. Her body now upside down, she lowered the top of her head onto the pole, using it to support her weight. The zebra mare carefully assumed the ideal pose, and as her mind began to ease into the depths of meditation, she smiled again. After all, she thought for a moment, peering out toward the setting sun. Who knows what may lurk in the, in the forest these days, and why do I not end with a rhyme? The end. <laughs> Mm. Oh, by the way, in okay. case you're interested, the notes in Cutie, Sweetie Bell's Kitty Mark depict the lick. I have no what? idea what that is, so I'm not even going to bother uh, to ask. Oh, I believe it's this. Don't make me shoot every single flippy musician in the world now. <laughs> Well, that was to catch up with the sun. <sighs> and now it's done, and people are wondering, God, I thought this would never end. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a lovely story. It was long, filled with many rhymes and many non-rhymes. and we should, just, we should just do a, just a random take of Zakora, just not rhyming or anything, just going, like, absolutely freestyling, you know? We yes, should totally do that one of these days. And I almost got charged... For domestic abuse of children. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. <laughs> oh, this was a wonderful stream. Yay. I'm so happy we got Alex. And yeah, no, Cantalot Court has nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now well, let's. I think it's about time to call it a night. Yes. Thank you again, Alex, for joining us. That was fun. Uh, it's no problem, Okay. See you guys later. Good night, <laughs> everyone, you lovely people.